Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde Ogun Tade. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde Ogun Tade. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde Ogun Tade. Coming to you live and direct from Wilmington, Delaware. Coming to you live and direct from Wilmington, Delaware. Coming to you live and direct from Wilmington, Delaware. Brothers and sisters, this is my first time going live. No, this is not the new phone. I'm going live from the FDMG phone. This is not the new phone. I'm going live from the FDMG phone. Brothers and sisters, hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. I saw day three of the Democratic National Convention. I saw day three of the Democratic National Convention. Kamala Harris is Barack Obama 2.0. Unlike many of my fellow American Africans, Unlike many of my fellow American Africans, unlike many of my fellow American Africans who are caught up in the emotionalism of election 2024, I'm not caught up in the emotionalism of election 2024. If it's one thing political science has taught me, you cannot be emotional when making political decisions. You cannot be emotional when conducting political analysis. Three things came out. Four things came out very clearly to me in Vice President Harris's lecture. And for my Democratic Party plantation slaves, I am neither pro-Trump nor pro-Harris. I want to be very clear. I am neither pro-Trump nor pro-Harris. I want to be very, very clear. I am neither pro-Trump or pro-Harris. Let me make this very, very clear. The reason Vice President Harris gets more attention is because the black bourgeoisie the Kuhn Luminati, the untalented 10th, the Negro aristocracy is actively selling Vice President Harris to the American African community. The bourgeoisie, the untalented 10th, the Kuhn Luminati, the Negro aristocracy is trying to shame American Africans into voting for Vice President Harris. So she's going to get more attention because we already know what the Donald Trump agenda is for African people, and it's not good. We already know what the Donald Trump agenda is for the American African people, and it's not good. We already know what the Donald Trump agenda is for the American African, and it's not good. But the black bourgeoisie, particularly the celebrity elite of the Negro aristocracy. The celebrity elite of the Negro aristocracy. The celebrity elite of the Negro aristocracy is trying to sell us Vice President Harris. So what are the four themes that came out in Vice President Harris's speech? Now let's put this in context. Let Intercontinental Ifa Tunde put this in context. Toronto, Canada, October 5th and 6th, pull-up season. Toronto, Canada, October 5th and 6th, pull-up season. Toronto, Canada, October 5th and 6th, pull-up season. Melbourne and Sydney, Australia, the date will be dropping soon. Melbourne and Sydney, Australia, the date will be dropping soon. 
my Australian Africans, God willing, I will see you before the year ends, completing my continental sweep. The first scholar of modern time to be invited to speak on every continent in the world at least twice. History will be made in Melbourne and Sydney, Australia. History will be made in Melbourne on Sydney, Australia. But the four themes that came out in Vice President Harris's speech. And mind you, she did not write the speech. The white power structure does not leave speech writing to the politicians for president. Let us be clear. She did not write the speech. She gave the speech. So when you're analyzing and evaluating, when you're trying to understand, overstand, and understand Vice President Harris's words, you have to think about the power structure who wrote the speech, the messages they wanted to give to the American people and the messages, more importantly, that they did not want to give to the American African people. Let me say that again. Shout out to the Virgos. I understand we in Virgo season, but I'm still rocking my Leo colors. Shout out to the Virgos. I know we in Virgo season, but I'm still rocking my Leo colors. Shout out to the Virgos. I know we in Virgo season, but I'm still rocking my Leo colors. Michelle Obama is not a candidate for president. Like I said, presidential candidates do not write their own speeches when it comes to speaking at their respective parties' national convention. Please improve your listening comprehension skills. Please improve your listening comprehension skills. Please improve your listening comprehension skills. So what were the messages that the white power structure put into Vice President Harris's speech? A couple of messages. Number one, immigrants are the future of America. That's number one. Oh, yes. People of color are the future of America. People of color does not include black. People of color is a code word that we're talking to all non-black people of color. So that's number one. People of color are not included in the future. Excuse me. People of color are the future of America. American Africans are not. People of color are the future of America, but American Africans are not. Didn't you find how strategically they played to black people? They had a black anchor. They had a black band. They had Al Sharpton. They had my beautiful sister, Carrie Washington, who's a fabulous orator. A fabulous orator, but a Democratic Party plantation slave nonetheless, but a fabulous orator. They had D.L. Hughley come on out there. They had the Central Park Five come on out there. They played to black people's emotions very well. They played to black people's emotions very well. They played to black people's emotions very well, but they strategically and effectively did not discuss black people at all. Are you feeling me? Where are my deep thinkers at? This is a message for deep thinking Africans. Emotional plantation party members, get off the feed right now. This is not a conversation for Democratic Party plantation slaves. This is a conversation for independent African thinkers. This is a live for independent African thinkers. If you are not an independent African thinker, you don't want to hear this message. If you are not an independent African thinker, you don't want to hear this message. If you are not an independent African thinker, you don't want to hear this message. The imagery was all for black people. The imagery was all for black people. The imagery was all for black people. The messages were completely devoid of anything relevant to black people. They used the imagery to appeal to Africans. The message was completely, completely irrelevant to American Africans.
kind of reminds me of the last Transformers movie. It kind of reminds me of the last Transformers movie where they played hip hop music throughout the whole movie. Rise of the Beasts. Rise of the Beast. They played all black hip hop music in the last Transformers movie. But the main character was a person of color. The main character was a person of color. There were almost no black people in the movie. The sidekick sister was in the movie. The beautiful African sister was in the movie, but outside of her, there were hardly any black people in Transformers, but they played hip hop music through the whole movie. So if you were not a deep thinker, you will think Transformers had a bunch of black actors, but it only had one black actor, but they played hip hop music. The Democratic National Convention. They used black music. They played Beyonce. They had a black band. They had Al Sharpton, D.L. Hughley, the Central Park Five. But no messages for black people in Kamala Harris's speech. No messages for black people in Kamala Harris's speech. No messages for black people in Kamala Harris speech. What you heard was immigrants over and over again. Her Indian mother who raised her after separating from her father. She, she bigged up immigrants. She bigged up immigrants. Barack Obama bigged up the rainbow. Joe Biden bigged up the rainbow. Kamala Harris is bigging up the immigrant. Black people, we're done. Black people, we are done unless we decide to save ourselves. I want y'all to hear me tonight. Kamala Harris made sure not to touch on anything that matters to black people. Kamala Harris made sure not to touch on anything that matters to black people. Her message was clear. Immigrants are the future. Immigrants are the future of America, which makes sense because white people are losing their numbers. Which makes sense because white people are losing their numbers. Which makes sense because white people are losing their numbers. And so the people of color are the new probationary whites in America. I hope you American Africans are listening to me. I hope you American Africans are listening to me. I hope you American Africans are listening to me. People of color is the new cold word for temporary Caucasian. People of color are is the new code word for probationary Caucasian. I hope you're listening to me. People of color is the new code word for symbolic Caucasian. I hope y'all listening. And black people, part of this is our fault. American Africans, first of all, the melanin is dripping in Virgo season. Because the Leo sun is in the sky every day. Melanin drip. The melanin is dripping right now, brothers and sisters. I, I look fabulous if I might say so myself. My African DNA, my ancestral lineage is shining through. Not a lineage of slaves, but a lineage of freedom fighters. Not a lineage of slaves, but a lineage of the enslaved. Not a lineage of slaves, but a lineage of the free. See, unlike you Negroes, unlike you Negroes, I don't believe there were slaves in America before 1865. There were enslaved Africans in America, but there were no slaves. Enslaved, you are forced. Slave, you are willing. Enslaved, you are forced. Slave, you are willing. Are you following me, brothers and sisters? Give me some hearts from the queens and some fists from the kings. Are you following me, my unapologetically African anti-snow bunny alpha males are you following me my unapologetically african anti-snow puppy queens out there we were enslaved before 1865 we volunteered to be slaves after 1865 
We were enslaved before 1865. We volunteered to be slaves after 1865. We have been pushing multiculturalism to our own detriment for the last 24 years. I'm scolding the black bourgeoisie. I'm scolding the Negro elite. I'm scolding the black church. I'm scolding the black secret societies. I'm scolding black America. Did we or did we not push multiculturalism since the year 2000? True or false? Doesn't every other black person you know talk about how they love all people? They don't see color. Talk black to me right now, Africans. Did we not for the last quarter of a century tell the whole world we love everybody and we don't want no special treatment? We don't want no we don't want no favors. True or false, brothers and sisters? Did we not dig the ditch? Did we not dig the grave that Barack Obama, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have pushed us into? Did not the American African people? Did we or did we not dig the grave for the past 24 years that Barack Biden and Kamala are going to push us into? We created this people of color multicultural comfortability. We made it comfortable for them to ignore us for the POCs. And when I say POC, I'm speaking of peoples of color. When I say POC, the POCs, we got the LGBTs and now we got the POCs. We got the LGBTs and now we got the POCs, immigrants who are coming to remove the American African. New York and Chicago were only the testing grounds because they are the two largest and the two strongest black communities. New York City and Chicago was only the testing ground because they were the two largest and the two strongest black communities. Once Kamala gets elected, they are going to take the migrant crisis national. Oh yes. Jackson, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, Detroit, Michigan, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Little Rock. The immigration crisis is coming to a black community near you. I said the immigration crisis is coming to a black community near you. I said the immigration crisis is coming to a black community near you. Kamala Harris made it clear the future of America is the future of probationary whites, symbolic whites, the POCs, people of color. People of color are the new Americans. White people numbers are down. They're not reproducing. They're trying to isolate the mitochondrial DNA of the African kingdom, but they have not been successful until then. People of color will rule you. Let's go to the Caribbean islands for a comparative analysis. Let's go to the Caribbean islands for a comparative analysis. Shall we go to the Caribbean islands for a comparative analysis? Where are my Caribbean Africans at? Where are my Caribbean Africans at? Where are all my Caribbean Africans at? This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism coming to you live from Wilmington, Delaware. FDMG Wilmington, Delaware. Hit the cash app and the PayPal for the school of the future. FDMG Wilmington, Delaware. Let's go to the Caribbean. My Jamaican Africans know this. My Bermudian Africans know this. My Bahamian Africans know this. My St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. Lucia, St. Martin, St. Vincent Africans know this. Oh, yes. My Turks and Caicos Africans know this. My Grenadian Africans know this. My Guadalupean Africans know this. And do you know what they know? They know that before the white man left the Caribbean, he put the brown man and the yellow man in position before the white man left the Caribbean. He put the brown man and the yellow man in position to make sure black people could never control those islands again. Talk black to me, Jamaica. Talk black to me, Haiti. 
Talk black to me, Grenada. Talk black to me, St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. Lucia, St. Vincent. Talk black to me. Talk black to me. The white man put the brown man and the yellow man in charge of the Caribbean islands to make sure black people would never control them again. He's about to do the same thing to the black communities of America. There will be an East Indian Caribbean invasion of black America. There will be an East Indian Caribbean invasion of black America. There will be East Indians from the Caribbean invading black America and taking over our communities like you have never seen before. This is why calling Kamala Harris a black woman is establishing an East Indian takeover of the American African community. I said this is why calling Kamala Harris a black woman is creating the groundwork for every East Indian in the Caribbean islands to come to America and say they black. I got news for you. Much to the East Indian family, I have nothing against you. No disrespect to the Asian family, the Chinese, the Latino, the Arab. I have no quarrel with you. I'm simply saying that our oppressor, our former slave master, our colonizer is using you to get rid of us. Using you as a proxy and an intermediary to oppress us. And now that black people are calling Kamala Harris black. And let me say this, there's nothing more ridiculous than to hear a Negro say Kamala Harris looks like an everyday black woman. Take any East Indian woman, all due respect to them, take any East Indian woman and put them in some black clothes and give them a black hairstyle and give them some black swag and they will look just like your auntie and uncle as well. The East Indian looks the most like the American African because the East Indian, India, was originally peopled in ancient times by African people. So yes, East Indians have the DNA of the African family because they came from us. So the fact Kamala Harris's skin is brown, that doesn't make her an African. I can show you Chinese with brown skin. I can show you Vietnamese with brown skin. I can show you Arabs with brown skin that don't make them Africans. They talking about she the same color of us. Most East Indians are your color because their ancient ancestors came from Africa. Vietnamese. I can show you Vietnamese darker than me. They not African. Their ancestors are African. We don't even realize. We just threw an alley-oop to the East Indians to colonize the black community. We don't even realize it. So politically uneducated and ridiculous. We don't even realize it. We are throwing an alley-oop. What did my Uncle Steve Harvey say? I'm throwing an alley-oop. Well, guess what, Uncle Steve and Uncle DL? And I'm going to deal with y'all in the second live. This is not the Steve Harvey clapback. This is not the DL Hughley clapback. I'm going to deal with them ninjas later on. I'm a, this is not the Steve Harvey D.L. Hughley clap back, but you can best believe I will be clapping back respectfully on Uncle D.L. and Uncle Steve. I'm going to be clapping back at Uncle D.L. and Uncle Steve, but this is not that live. This is a live for deep thinking, critical thinking Africans. Kamala Harris is throwing the alley-oop for the East Indians to take over the black community. I want you to pay attention to how your community goes from black to brown. Pay attention. Brown migrants and brown East Indians are the future of black America. Spanish speaking brown people and East Indian speaking brown people, Spanish speaking brown people 
and East Indian speaking brown people, Spanish speaking brown people, and East Indian speaking brown people are the future of the American African. And if you think East Indians like black folks, whoo -hoo, if you think East Indians like black folks, you better go read some Mahatma Gandhi. If you think East Indians like black folks, you better go read some Mahatma Gandhi. If you think East Indians like black folks, you better go read some Mahatma Gandhi. You better go visit Durban, South Africa. Where my Durban, South Africa Africans at? Where my Durban? They'll tell you about how East Indians feel about black people. Go to India and talk to the the uh, so-called untouchables of East India and how they get treated by East Indians. They can't stand blacks. This is Kamala Harris. She's a South Asian. Her parents claim black just so they can get the civil rights benefits to help themselves get better. This is how Caribbean East Indians operate. They claim black to get the benefits. Kamala Harris's parents claim she was black so they can get the affirmative action benefits so they could get the housing benefits. They only claimed black so they could benefit from our provisions. She wasn't raised as a black girl. If she was raised as a black girl, I'm going to say it again. Her parents claimed black on paperwork so they could get the affirmative action set asides. That's why she went to Howard University. That's why she went to Howard University to get the grants and the scholarships and the federal aid and to get the set asides. They wasn't black. They only claim that on paper to get your benefits. And since you got black men running around saying she's the same color as us, as if you don't have brown Asians and brown Arabs and brown Vietnamese. Since you got stupid black people running around saying she looks just like my aunt, we the same complexion. I can show you brown Vietnamese. I can show you brown Arabs. They don't belong to the African race, you idiots. You idiots. Her father is a Jamaican East Indian, not a Jamaican African. Her father is a Jamaican East Indian, not a Jamaican African. You idiots. You idiots. But now, since black people said East Indians can now be black. Since you Negroes have said East Indians can be black. You just invited them to the migrant party at your expense because you said East Indians can be black. You have just invited them to the migrant party at your expense. You have just invited the East Indians to feast on black people's resources, to feast on black people's communities. There's going to be a brown takeover of black people, Spanish speaking Browns, East Indian speaking Browns, and we invited them in people of color people of color that's all we talk about people of color people of color. Well, guess what the POCs. You think the LGBTs took over your resources? Wait until the POCs get their hands on your resources. You thought the LGBTs took over your resources under Obama? Wait until the POCs take over your resources under Kamala Harris. The brown takeover of black. They are not us. They are not us. They are not us. Y'all keep asking me who to vote for. I don't endorse candidates. And me personally, I don't have a reason to vote for either of them. If you need to vote because it's an because you feel it is you owe it to your ancestors, I don't have a problem with that. Go vote for Fannie Lou Hamer. You need somebody to vote for? Go vote for Fannie Lou Hamer. She the reason your ass can vote anyway. 
Go vote for Fannie Lou Hamer. And why they kept bringing up Fannie Lou Hamer at the Democratic National Convention. Why they kept bringing up Fannie Lou Hamer at the Democratic National Convention. Why they kept bringing up Fannie Lou Hamer at the, you know why? Because they heard Dr. Umar bigging up. I'm the only person who's been pushing Fannie Lou Hamer for the past 15 years. I'm the one who said Fannie Lou Hamer got the voting right. I'm the one who took our queen mother ancestor warrior Fannie Lou Hamer and raised her up. They wasn't talking about no Fannie Lou Hamer. And now at the DNC, Fannie Lou Hamer this and Fannie Lou Hamer that. Fannie Lou Hamer fought for black people, not people of color. Fannie Lou Hamer fought for black people, not people of color. Fannie Lou Hamer fought for black people, not people of color. Fannie Lou Hamer fought for black people, not POCs. Not POCs. She didn't fight for POCs, people of color. She fought for Africans. She fought for Africans. And what they not telling you is the Democratic Party tried to sabotage Fannie Lou Hamer and the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. They don't tell you that. Fannie Lou Hamer's enemy was the Democratic Party. Fannie Lou Hamer's enemy was the Democratic Party. Fannie Lou Hamer's enemy was the Democratic Party. I want a television debate. I want a television debate with Steve Harvey, D.L. Hughley, Ricky Smiley versus Dr. Umar Ifatunde is the Democratic Party the party of African people. Roland Martin can join in too. If they want Roland, they can bring Roland too. I want D.L. Hughley, Steve Harvey, and Ricky Smiley in a debate. Is the Democratic Party the party of the American African? Somebody get Steve Harvey on the phone. Somebody get D.L. Hughley on the phone. Somebody get Ricky Smiley. Dr. Umar wants to come on y'all show and debate you three on one. And if y'all need Roland to help you out, Roland can come too. We can make it four on one. Steve Harvey said that the Omega Psi Phi brothers run the radio. In all respect to my Omega Psi Phi brothers, the late great Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad was a member of Omega Psi Phi, so I'm not going to reduce the Omegas down to three men. I'm not going to do that. We're going to keep this about Steve, D.L., and Ricky. Okay? Steve, D.L., and Ricky. I want a debate. D.L. Hughley, will you debate me on your radio? Steve Harvey, will you debate me on your radio? Ricky Smiley, will you debate me? I'll debate all of you separately or all three of you together. Since y'all run black radio, since y'all run black radio and I run black consciousness, it's only right that we have a clash of kings. Y'all called the kings of comedy, right? The kings of comedy? Let's call it the kings of comedy versus King Kong consciousness. Let's call it the kings of comedy versus King Kong consciousness. Let's call it the kings of comedy versus King Kong consciousness. I'm ready right now. I don't need no prep time. I'm ready right now. Intellectual Ifa Tunde is ready right now. When are we going to do this debate? When we going to do this debate, Steve, Ricky, DL, I want y'all on the stage in front of the people right now. I'm doing it for Fannie Lou Hamer. I'm doing it for Emmett Till. I'm doing it for Mega Evers. I'm doing it for Huey P. Newton. I'm doing it for His Excellency, the Most Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. I'm doing it for the Honorable Frederick Douglass. I'm doing it for Breonna Teller, Trayvon Martin, Sandra Bland, Amir Lott. Uh, Dante, Sonia Massey, Freddie Gray. I'm doing it for them. Let's do the debate. Let's do the debate. If Omega Sci-Fi, if my brothers of Omega Sci-Fi, who I love and respect, want to host the debate, it could be an Omega Sci-Fi debate. You can have the purple and gold. I don't care who hosts. I don't care where it's host. I want Steve, Ricky, and DL on the same stage. 
Keep the same energy, Africans. Keep the same energy. King Kong consciousness versus the kings of comedy. Will the real coons please stand up? King Kong consciousness versus the kings of comedy. Will the real coons please stand up? I said King Kong consciousness versus the kings of comedy. Let's settle this once and for all. Let's settle this once and for all, brother. Oh, yes. You can fool some of the people all the time and all the people some of the time, but you cannot fool the King Kong consciousness none of the time. They bringing up Fannie Lou Hamer when the Democratic Party sabotaged Fannie Lou Hamer. Look at the hip hop. They don't think y'all know y'all history. They don't think y'all know y'all history. Bringing up Fannie Lou Hamer. She turned in her damn grave. She turned in her damn grave. The Democratic Party was Fannie Lou Hamer's enemy, brother and sister. It will be about both parties, but who's pushing Trump? I'm not pushing Trump, and they not pushing Trump, so we don't need to have a conversation about Trump, but we could bring it up if you like. They not pushing Trump, and I'm not pushing Trump, but we can include Trump if you want. The problem with y'all Negroes is y'all believe y'all have to belong to a plantation at all. Let me say it again. The problem with y'all Negroes is y'all believe y'all need to belong to a plantation at all. Y'all don't want to get off of a plantation. Y'all need a plantation, whether it's the Republican Party plantation, Democratic Party plantation, Green Party plantation. Y'all need a plantation. That's the problem with black folks. You need to belong. Who should I vote? Stop begging me for the right to belong to a plantation. I'm a runaway African. I represent, where my runaway Africans at? We running away with our vote. We not stand on no damn plantation. I'm, I, I represent the runaway slave party. <laughs> I represent the runaway enslaved African vote. I represent, we done ran off the Democratic Party plantation, and we ain't coming back. We done ran off the Republican Party plantation. We done, we ain't coming back. If you do your history, if you do your history, the corporation is a plantation. All of us work, right? You work at a job. You work for a corporation. The corporation is the 21st century plantation. The NBA is a plantation. NFL is plantation. Hip hop is plantation. Hollywood is plantation. Media is plantation. We still on the plantation. The corporation is the new plantation, my ninja. The corporation is the new plantation. And guess what the new slave chain is? Guess what the new shackle is? The new shackle is your paycheck. The new plantation is the corporation and the new shackle is your paycheck. The new plantation is the corporation and the new shackle is your paycheck talk black to me one time africans i'm a runaway slave remember we ran off the republican party plantation we ran off the republican pl party plantation around 1930s it's almost 2030 it's almost 2030 so if black people could give up the Republican Party plantation back in the 1930s, why can't we give up the Democratic Party plantation in the 2020s? Who with me? I want to lead a great exodus out of the Democratic Party. We will no longer be exploited. We will no longer be taken advantage. Cream of wheat, this is your land, but that is not a school. That is not a hospital. That is not a supermarket. That is not a bank. That is not a distribution network. That is not a system. That is not a solution. So when you niggas jump on here talking about this is our land. Okay, the Native Americans said that too. That's not a program. That's a slogan. This is our land. That's not a solution. I'm a pretendian. That's not a solution. That's a slogan. We looking for solutions here. Remember, this is a live for deep thinking Africans. Let me get back to Kabamala. Let me get back to Kabamala. She was clear that the future belongs to the immigrant. She was clear that East Indians are Americans too. She was also clear 
that women are going to be promoted on a whole nother level to the detriment of men, especially in the black community. And she reaffirmed her loyalty to the untouchables. She made it crystal clear that she supports the untouchables, just like Obama. If you go listen to Barack Obama's acceptance speech, go listen to Barack Obama's acceptance speech in 2008 and 2012. Go listen to Barack Obama's acceptance speeches. Sound just like Kamala. And they kept pushing middle class. They kept pushing middle. Well, for all y'all who want to be pretendian, guess what? You can now be an East Indian now pretend a pretendians. Pretendians. Y'all could join up with the East Indians now because they're about to take over the black community. So all pretendians, you should go get you a dot. Go get you a dot right here. Pretendians, go get you a dot. Go get you a copy of the bag of that Gita. Go get you some curry chicken and join in with the Kamala movement. Pretendians, you can now be East Indians. Pretendians, you can now be East Indians. They're going to be running the show. Pretendians, you can now be East Indians. And the reason Kabamala kept talking about middle class. And the reason Kabamala kept talking about the middle class. And the reason Kabamala kept talking about the middle class. That's a cold word to white America that we're not talking to black people. That's a cold word to white America. Listen to me. I told y'all this eight years ago. I told y'all this 16 years ago. When they say middle class, that means not poor. We're not talking to black people coming out of prison. We're not talking to homeless blacks. We're not talking to single black mothers with children. When you hear the word middle class, that is a cold word that we're not talking to black people. That's why they had them dance for you. They had them sing for you. They had Al Sharpton and D.L. Hughley and Kerry Washington and Michelle and Barack. Symbols for Negroes substance for everybody else 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 brothers and sisters i'm not going to keep you too much longer i'm just hurt that you have black people running around campaigning for a woman who don't even care about this woman shook her head i'm not going to do nothing just for black people she was so emotional in her she could have just said we can't only serve the american africans that's something we can think about Uh, uh she shook her head the two drops of Negro came out of Kamala. The two drops of ancient African DNA came out of that South Asian woman. The two drops of ancient African melanin came out of that East Indian woman. And she shook her head and said, I'm not going to do nothing just for black people with emotion, with emotion. So here's what I want to say to all of y'all who consider her a black woman. Here is what I want to say to all of y'all who consider her a black woman. If she considered herself a part of us, if she considered herself a part of us, why did she answer that question in the third person? I'm going to ask you again. If Kamala Harris considers herself an American African, a Jamaican African, if she considers herself a part of us, why did she answer that question with such negative emotion and in the third person? Why did Kamala Harris, when asked what she was going to do for black people, why did she answer that question with such negative emotion and in the third person? 
She didn't say us. She said black people. She said y'all. And Donald Trump is no better. Donald Trump did nothing. And here's another thing. D.L. Hughley, Steve Harvey, Ricky, my uncles who I love and respect. No hate. This is only debate. No hate. This is only debate. I'm not here for division. If y'all going to push Kamala Harris, D.L. Hughley, if y'all going to push Kamala Harris, Steve Harvey, if y'all going to push Kamala Harris, Ricky Smiley, can you at least get a concession? This is why I'm so disappointed. I could respect you, D.L., for crashing out on the convention stage if you got a single concession. What is she going to do about police brutality? Is she going to eliminate qualified immunity? Y'all keep talking about Donald Trump is going to give the police full immunity. Kamala Harris ain't saying nothing about qualified immunity. Y'all crying about Donald Trump giving the police full immunity. But y'all ain't said a word about Kamala Harris protecting qualified immunity. I ain't heard Vice President Harris say one word about getting rid of qualified immunity for police. I ain't heard Vice President Kamala Harris say one word about getting rid of qualified immunity for police. When she talks about people of color, POC, y'all think she talking about y'all. Politically uneducated American Africans. People of color. The word would not even be used if they cared about black people. Somebody answer the question. Why did they stop calling black people black people and started calling you people of color? Why did they stop calling black people black people and started calling you people of color? Why did they stop calling black people black people and started calling you people of color to exclude you from the conversation? To a people of color does not mean black. It means everybody who is not white but is not black. People of color means everybody who is not white but is not black. People of color means everybody who is not white but who is not black. When y'all going to get over this? You must be mentally ill to champion somebody who ain't gave you a single concession. She didn't even show up to the National Association of Black Journalists invitation. Kamala Harris ain't interviewing with no black people, just like Barack Obama. They don't have to. They're going to get your vote anyway. And it looks like her sister had on extra dark makeup. When you look at Kamala Harris's sister's pictures, her and Kamala are the same complexion. And this is no disrespect to the young lady. She has a black husband, I believe. Kamala Harris's sister, they put on dark makeup. That woman is not that dark. She is not darker than Kamala Harris. Go online and look at pictures of Kamala Harris's sister. Go online and look at pictures of Kamala Harris's sister. Go online and look at pictures of Kamala Harris's sister. She is not that dark. The Democratic Party plantation made her dark. They made her snap her neck, shake her head. They made her act like a black woman on that stage. That woman is not that dark. Look at her pictures. They darkened her up. I am not disrespecting her. I respect that East Indian woman. I ain't got no problem with respecting East Indians. They are human beings. They deserve respect. But she is not that dark. They darkened her up to appeal to y'all. They darkened her up to appeal to y'all. They darkened her up to appeal to y'all. All that black music, not a word in the speech about black people. You had Mark Morial, you had Al Sharpton, you had Kerry Washington, you had D.L. Hughley, you had John Legend perform. Common Sense, I think Common Sense perform. Common Sense, I love and respect you, my brother. Did you get any concessions for black people? 
Mark Morial, did you get any concessions for black people? Al Sharpton, did you get any concessions for black people? Kerry Washington, as beautiful as you can be, as articulate as you can be, my beautiful African sister, I love you, but did you get a single concession? Why are we running around crashing out for candidates without a single promise? Uncle Steve Harvey said he was not being paid to push Kamala. Uncle Steve Harvey said he was not being paid to push Kamala. Uncle Steve Harvey said he was not being paid to push Kamala. Do you know what that means, Uncle Steve? When you say you were not being paid to push Kamala, you basically said they already own you, so there's no need for further compensation. Uncle Steve. Uncle Steve. I love and respect you, brother. I love and respect you. When you said you was pushing Kamala for free, do you know what you really said? Uncle Steve, do you know what you really said when you said they didn't pay you, you were pushing Kamala for free? You basically admitted you was already bought and sold, my brother. You basically admitted you were already bought and sold. My goodness. Here go another plantation slave. Let me tell you how you know when you found a plantation slave. You know you found a plantation slave when they when you speak about Kamala, they call you a Trump supporter. That's how you know you're dealing with a low vibrational, politically uneducated Negro. When you criticize Kamala, they say you must be a member of the Republican plantation. They believe all blacks are slaves. They believe all blacks are slaves. When you criticize Kamala, they automatically assume that you are on the Republican Party plantation. They don't believe that there's a such thing as a free thinking African. They don't believe there's a such thing as a free thinking African. They don't believe there's a such thing as a free thinking African. You already know what the solution is. Stop asking. You just in denial. You already know what the solution is. Stop asking. You're just in denial. You already know what the solution is. Stop asking. You're just in denial. The solution is to divest, hold the vote. Demand something for it or keep it to yourself. That's the solution for the black vote. Demand something for it as an organized black power, black vote block. We need a black vote for black power block. We need a black vote for black power block. Demand something as a unit, as a race, as a block, or don't vote at all. Get something for it or don't give it away. You get something for it or you don't give it away. You get something for it or you don't give it away. Period. Point blank. End of story. But you can't do that. Because you've been brainwashed into believing voting for black people is an obligation to ancestors who are no longer here. Dr. King and Fannie Lou Hamer, they didn't fight for the vote so it could be used as a ritual. Voting is not a ritual. Voting is not a ritual. Voting is not a religion. Voting is not a religion. Voting is not a rites of passage. Voting is not a ritual. It's not an empty symbol. You're not supposed to vote for symbol. Voting is not a symbol. Voting is a transaction for everybody except Africans. Voting is a transaction for everybody but Africans. Voting is a transaction. You're actually supposed to get something for it. Did you know that? American Africans you're actually supposed to get something for your vote and they're supposed to tell you what they're going to give you before you vote Steve Harvey 
Uncle Steve the Naive Harvey, Steve Naive, Naive Steve Harvey said, Naive Steve Harvey said, if we don't vote this time, we don't get nothing next time. If we don't vote this time, we don't get nothing next time. If we don't vote this time, we don't get nothing next time. Steve Harvey, we've been voting Democrat for 93 years. How many more empty elections are you expecting black people to tolerate? Naive Uncle Steve Harvey. We've been voting Democrat for 93 years. How many more empty, symbolic, ritualistic elections you want black people to tolerate, Steve Harvey, before we get something for the vote? Uncle Steve Naive. I want to debate with Steve Harvey, D.L. Hughley, and Ricky Smiley. I want to debate with Steve Harvey, D.L. Hughley, and Ricky Smiley. I want to debate with Steve Harvey, D.L. Hughley, and Ricky Smiley. Please put the word out. You two be in struggle streamers. You two be in struggle streamers. You two be in struggle streamers. I have an assignment for you. Y'all been stealing all my content for free. So when I ask you to do something, I need you to do it. You two be in struggle streamers. Y'all be stealing all my content for free. So when I ask you to do something, do it. I need you to put the word out. Dr. Umar wants a public debate in front of the black community with Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley, and D.L. Hughley, whether or not the Democratic Party is the party for blacks. I am the president of Young Black America. I am the president of the American African Youth Movement. I represent all young black youth under 30. We're all my under 30 year olds, make some noise. I am the official president of Young Black America. I represent the young, fearless, intelligent, thinking for the where my young people at if you under 30 make some noise where my silver back gorillas at where my under 30 brothers and sisters african immigrants that includes you latino africans if you identify as african full-time that includes you i'm talking to under 30 i'm going to have an under 30 convention we are having an under 30. I need my under 30 year olds. Find me a under a place. Houston, Texas needs a convention. Houston or Dallas. We need a Texas convention for the silverback gorillas. We need a Georgia convention for the silverback gorillas. We need a Chicago or Detroit convention for the silverback gorillas. We need a New York City convention for the silverback gorillas. That's Texas, Georgia, New York. Chicago or Detroit. We need a California convention for my silverback gorillas. We need a California, and where are we going to do the sixth one at? Texas, Georgia, Texas, Georgia, New York, Chicago or Detroit, California. Under 30, where y'all want the sixth and final convention at? We got to put it over somewhere in the Midwest. We got to go over there to the Midwest. Uh, or the deep south we could do mississippi we could do arkansas i think we're going to do but mississippi is close to texas though we could do texas or mississippi texas or mississippi texas or mississippi georgia or florida texas or mississippi georgia or florida new york or new jersey chicago or detroit we got to do california we got one more I'm organizing under 30 because the people over 30, some of y'all can't think. Y'all can still come support, though. We need those over 30 to be supporters of young black America. If you over 30, but we got to get the young people, y'all. Most of black America is young people. Most of black America, most of the African continent, I got to come to Africa and do an under 30 Pan-African political. Con Where my Africans at under 30? We're in Namibia, Botswana, Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, Eritrea, Malawi, Ethiopia, Madagascar, Cote d'Ivoire, Sierra Leone, Angola, Mozambique. Over 30, you can support. Under 30, you are the movement. Over 30, you can support. Under 30, if y'all know of a free place we can use. If you know of a free place we can use, we need free church free coliseum come on now step to the mega churches 
We need to use your space for free. Dr. Umar is having Bishop Turner, National Independent Black Political Movement for the under 30 American Africans. Let's get organized. I want to do it before Election Day. I want to do it before Election Day. If you live in Florida or Texas and you have a place for me, text message me. If you live in Florida or Texas and you have a place for me, text message me. If you live in Chicago or Detroit and you have a place for the convention. If you live in California and you have a place for the convention. If you live in New Jersey or New York and you have a place for the convention. If you live in Texas or Mississippi and needs the seat 500, we can't go under 500. I prefer a thousand, but we can't go under 500. Free, free. Stop trying to hustle everybody. Free place. We're trying to save ourselves out here. Young people get to work. My cell number, 215-989-9858. 215-989-9. I'm ready for this. Let's do it for November. I'm going to block out. Let me look at my calendar right now. Y'all think I'm playing games with y'all. No, November is the election. We got to do October. November is the election. I'm going to go through my phone and block out a couple weekends. California, this is whoever gets to me first. Whoever gets to me first with a place that can seat five. Dr. Umar, I have a place that can seat 500. You need to text me some pictures. I need to know your name. You cannot be a rainbow ganger. You cannot be a person of color. You cannot be a, a accommodationist, integrationist, or bunny hopper. Okay? Okay? Pan-African ethics. We standing on business. Pan-African ethics. We standing on business. 215-98. Not outside. It needs to be indoor. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. I am the president of Young Black America officially. I have taken it. You cannot come to the convention if you are a bunny hopper. I don't want to see you. My under 30s, I love you. But if you bunny hop and stay your ass home, we don't have time for that. We're trying to create a new black America. A new black America for the future of the American African. If you are guilty of committing sins against the African race, you cannot come. 215-989-9858. If you have a place for me in Texas or Florida, if you have a place, excuse me, if you have a place for me in Texas or Mississippi, if you have a place for me for Georgia or Florida, if you have a place for me, New York or New Jersey, if you have a place for me, Illinois or Michigan. If you have a place for me in California and we still got room for one more, we're going to do six of them. Text my phone, email drumar johnson at yahoo.com. Drumar johnson. Under 30, it's time to organize. Under 30, it's time to organize. Under 30, it's time to organize. This is your big brother, King Kong Consciousness. Virgo season is in. But we rocking. We rocking. Let's get or let's organize the under 30s. They are the future. Registration and website coming soon. Registration and website coming soon. Registration and website coming soon. Peace and Pan-Africanism.